I can't die! I'm never gonna die! Free City is a super popular online game with a fantastic world and a lot of possibilities. Here, players in special glasses can have fun forgetting about reality, seduce women, steal cars, and even save the world or, on the contrary, destroy it. We meet Guy. Yeah, yeah, that's his name. He lives in Free City and seems perfectly happy, wakes up sweetly, stretches, greets his fish, eats breakfast, and gets ready for work at the bank. He drinks the best coffee and saves money for new sneakers. Nothing bothers him. Not helicopters flying overhead, not robots in the city center, not constant fights. A guy has only one problem. He dreams of finding love. Suddenly, robbers burst into the bank. Shots are fired, and everyone falls to the floor. But even that doesn't upset the guy. He keeps telling his buddy about his dream girl. At the same time, a new heroine appears in the game. She takes some files from the mysterious man and leaves. Then she gets rid of her informant. The girl's name is Millie and she is one of the creators of the Free City source code. Guy and Millie meet by chance on a city street. Our hero says that she hums his favorite song and looks at her with loving eyes. Millie is surprised. She didn't write such lines for this character. Guy runs after her and gets hit by a train. Oops. At that very second, the girl leaves the game. Millie doesn't play Free City for fun. She has to find proof that the code for this video game has been stolen from her and her friend by a devious and deceitful developer named Antoine. The alarm clock rings and our guy wakes up. At first, he follows a familiar pattern, but at some point, something goes wrong. In a coffee shop, he wants to try a new drink, cappuccino, and this shocks the barista and not only her. All the characters in the coffee shop look at the guy with confusion. They all drink the same drink, coffee, cream, and sugar. Tank pulls up to the cafe and points a gun in our guy's direction. The guy immediately says he was joking, and of course he'll drink the same stuff he always drinks. He nervously drinks his standard coffee and goes to work. Other robbers break into the bank. Everyone falls face down on the floor again, but this time, the guy is not having fun. He sees the girl of his dreams walking down the street again, and the guy decides to act. He asks the robber for his gaming glasses, and a fight breaks out between them. Our hero rips off the robber's glasses and accidentally pulls the trigger of his gun. The robber flies into the wall with a huge hole in his stomach. The guy drops the gun, runs out into the street, and puts on the robber's glasses. The world he knows changes completely. He sees things that other people don't. I mean, other NPC, like a med kit that's on the street. Turns out you can use this med kit and get refreshed or healed. Now the guy sees the world of Free City through the eyes of a real player. He manages to get a lot of money and finally buys himself the new sneakers he's been dreaming of for so long. He was so lost in his daydreaming that he was almost got hit by a train again. But our hero slowed down just in time. We are introduced to Free City's second developer, a programmer named Keys. He's analyzing the guy's behavior in the game, trying to understand how an NPC attacked a real player if it wasn't written in his code. Keys also joins the game. He chooses a cop skin, and his colleague Mauser turns into a pink bunny. Wow, it smells like Fortnite. They find the guy and interrogate him, suspecting that some players are brazenly using an NPC skin. The guy doesn't get it, so the cop and the pink bunny start shooting. Our hero tries to escape. Guy sees that he can do super jumps in his new sneakers. However, he lacks agility and crashes into a metal support, and then the ceiling. The third jump is successful, and Guy makes it to the roof, but the cop and the rabbit create a ladder and run after him. Definitely Fortnite, don't even argue. Our hero tries to jump to the crane rope, but flies. Guy falls from a huge skyscraper, but the hero is saved by an airbag in the form of four inflatable circles. He gets out and screams that he is now immortal, and gets hit by a police car, and bye-bye. Keys and Mauser leave the game. They have done their job, but still cannot understand anything. They got rid of the guy, but the number of players in the game didn't change, so he's not a real player. But then who is he? Keys comes home. He watches an interview in which he and Millie talk about their development, an unusual indie game with a unique code. The duo had hoped to release it soon, but as you understand, this did not happen. Millie comes to Keys and they start arguing. We find out that a developer named Antoine stole their unique game code for his game, and now Millie is doing everything possible to sue the scumbag. To that end, she created her own game character, Molotov Girl in Free City, hoping to find evidence against Antoine in the game itself. But Keyes accepted the injustice and got a job at his company. Meanwhile, our guy wakes up. He promises himself that today will be different. Millie also joins the game. She has to infiltrate the stash that contains the proof of her source code. That's when our guy approaches her. The girl decides that it is some player who has chosen a strange skin of a guy in a blue shirt. The guy himself doesn't even suspect that he's not real, 
and doesn't understand most of the gamer's slang, some guys start to shoot at them from the stash, and Millie pulls a gun as well. Realizing that the forces are unequal, the girl decides to teleport, and the guy jumps into the portal after her. Millie opens the weapon cache and tells the guy to level up, because he is only first level. That means he cannot do anything. Only when he reaches level 100 will she agree to befriend him. Guy decides to be a hero and do good deeds to improve his skills and meet the girl of his dreams again. I personally suggest him to use XP boost cards. Our hero loses a lot in the beginning, but that's okay. After all, you can wake up in your bed again and again and start over. After some quests, the guy in the blue shirt gets cooler and cooler. They even make news stories about him in real life. Millie again tries to get into the stash. Keys helps her open the door and Millie finds her source code. However, an alarm goes off and she is immediately attacked by a mob of armed men. Millie shoots back, but the forces are not equal. Also, all the exits are booby-trapped. Our guy bursts into the building on a fancy motorcycle and throws the bad guys around. Now they fight together and help each other survive. The guy looks at Millie with delight. She is a real martial arts master. But there are too many bad guys, so the couple jumps on the motorcycle and flies out of the building at full speed. But motorcycles can't fly. Luckily, our couple has a jet parachute. They were saved, but the code could not be retrieved. Meanwhile, Antoine himself arrives at the corporation office. Antoine is a very unpleasant man who only cares about fame and money. He's rude to his subordinates and plans to launch Free City 2. The guy shows Millie his fleet of cars and brags about his high level. The girl decides she's a badass hacker who can help her get the code. A guy and Millie walk through the evening city. They realize they have a lot in common. For example, they both like bubblegum flavored ice cream. They also both like to ride on swings. Millie tells the guy about her life. They have their first kiss, and the idol is interrupted by a knock at the door. Keys came to Millie's house. He's been trying to figure out who this mysterious guy in the blue shirt is all along, and he found him in the database. Keys tells Millie that Antoine definitely stole their code, because he was the one who came up with the NPCs that would feel alive, like the guy in the blue shirt. The guy is not a player. He is a real artificial intelligence that believes in his reality, and he is not alone. All non-player characters level up and upgrade, learn new things, and evolve. Millie is shocked and very upset at the same time. She wasn't kissed by a real guy. Millie jumps back into the game. She finds the guy and brings him to the hero's tavern. There, the girl tells him that the whole town is a game, and that he is just an ordinary NPC and doesn't really exist. But that's not the worst of it. In two days, Free City 2 will be launched, and all old data will be erased, including the guy himself. Millie cries and begs our hero to help her save this game world. But the guy is very upset. He takes off his glasses and hurries to the seaside. His whole world turned out to be a lie. The guy goes to his former colleague and tries to tell him everything. His buddy reacts calmly. He thinks it's not whether you exist or not, it's whether you have real feelings. The guy realizes he has to save his world at all costs. He and his buddy go to the stash to get the source code for the Millie. The owner of the place turns out to be another player who adores the guy. The owner agrees to give the code and Guy takes it to Millie. They find evidence that Antoine stole the source code from them. The growing popularity of the guy in the blue shirt threatens the successful launch of Free City 2. Antoine orders Keys to reboot the world of the active game and erase the guy's parameters. Keys refuses to do it and quits. Antoine then decides to do it himself. He reboots the server, causing players to be out of the game for a while. And everything in this world starts to disappear. The game starts up again. Our guy is back to the default setting and wakes up in his apartment. He lives by the old algorithm. Fish, suit, breakfast, and coffee with a buddy. Millie finds him and wants to talk to him, but he can't remember anything about his previous life. The girl is desperate, and she leaves the game. She gets a call from Keys, who assures her that she can get the guy's memory back, but she just has to figure out how to do it. Keys admits that he brought his personal tastes, an image of the perfect girl into the code of this character. That's why the guy fell in love with Millie at first sight. The girl returns to the game. She breaks into the bank where the guy works and takes him hostage. Millie forces him to put on gaming glasses and tells him that in 24 hours, this world will be gone forever. Unable to bring back his memory with the usual words, Millie kisses him. Guy remembers all past events and details, including the location of the hidden island where the game's source code is stored. Guy and Millie gather all the non-player characters and convince them that they are more than just a set of numbers. The real machine uprising begins. Players arrive to rob a bank, but there's no one there. They walk sadly through the streets and cannot find a single NPC. The thing is, they're all in the coffee shop trying new drinks from the barista. Meanwhile, 
Antoine wants to destroy the world of Free City and erase all evidence. He also wants to destroy Millie's character, Molotov Girl. With the help of the guy in Keys, the girl manages to escape from a dozen out-of-control cars. Keys creates a bridge to the island and hacks the security system so that the whole world can see what is happening in Free City. Antoine is in hysterics. He demands that all players be removed from Free City and that dude be brought into the game. Millie's character disappears and says that the fate of the world is in Guy's hands. Guy is attacked by Dude. Dude is an unfinished and unintelligent copy of the Guy designed for Free City 2. Dude is much stronger than Guy. A friend from the bank comes to his aid, but he too is knocked out. Looks like our hero doesn't stand a chance. But wait, he finds the game glasses and uses Captain America's shield, the Hulk's arm, and then even the Jedi's lightsaber and gravity gun. And yet the dude manages to take him down. Then Guy puts his gaming glasses on him, and Dude gets distracted by all kinds of shiny stuff. In a rage, Antoine grabs an axe and manually destroys the game servers. The Free City universe is crumbling right before the eyes of players from all over the world. But our Guy against all odds manages to reach the island and show the world the source code created by Millie and Keys. Meanwhile, in the real world, Millie catches up with the enraged Antoine and asks for the Free City code to be returned to her. In return, she will not sue him, and all profits from Free City 2 and future versions will belong to him alone. The greedy Antoine gladly agrees, but Free City 2 turns out to be a complete failure. Millie and Keys release their own game, Free Life. They import the guy and all the inhabitants of Free City into the new world. This is a real hit. Millie, as Molotov Girl, joins the game and goes on a date with Guy. He realizes that the girl of his dreams cannot live in the virtual world all the time, so he lets her go. In the end, the guy confesses his love to her and says that he is just a message from his creator. Millie realizes that Keys, who created the guy, is actually madly in love with her. She takes off her headphones and runs after Keys. Now they're not just friends, they're a couple in love. But our guy doesn't get bored in the virtual world either. He became friends with the dude and again met his friend, with whom he once worked at the bank. Together, they set out for new adventures. Thank you for watching, folks. Hope you liked it. You can check another interesting recaps in the channel. Don't get left behind. Join me for best movie recaps. Hit that subscribe button, follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Goodbye till the next recap.